My name is Steven Siciliano, and today we're going to be talking about Power Automate Desktop. But before we do, I'd like to introduce you to Marios. Hi, I'm Marius Stavropoulos, GM of Power Automate Clients, and today we have exciting news to share with you. Great. Looking forward to it. Let's dive right in. Today, there are people who have a bunch of time that they're wasting on manual tasks. And our time is really one of the most precious things that we have. So helping people to be able to address the business problems that they have every single day, but in a much more efficient way, is something that's really important to us. So what we're building is automation for a modern world. And that means that people can spend more time on creativity, on strategic thinking, on the things that you enjoy doing, and less time on the boring, repetitive tasks. So uh, we found that across organizations, there's a bunch of challenges that can be addressed by bringing people together with automation. You know, for example, you have time that is being wasted on those repetitive tasks, but you also have those repetitive tasks that can be error prone, right? If you're doing the same task over and over again, you know, you may mess it up once or twice. With automation, that can be completely controlled in a way that you don't have those repetitive errors. Or if you want to connect legacy systems that are difficult to work with, you can get the people out of the loop with that and focus instead on having the automation do those tasks for you. And this, of course, all happens in a completely secure and compliant way. So with Power Automate, you can bring people together with automation. There's a specific type of automation that has gotten a lot of focus recently, and that's robotic process automation. Robotic process automation allows you to work with software as a human would, but with a software robot. And that software robot opens up a whole new world of ways to automate because it's not limited to what the computers could have done before. Now it can do anything that a person can. So this is really, really exciting, and it enables any task to be automated on somebody's desktop. Now, this is happening quickly too. So uh, according to Forrester, a report that was just released recently, uh, there is over 25% of tasks that can be automated will be automated in the next few years. So this is the time to start thinking about how automation can help you to be productive in your workplace and Power Automate is here to help you out. One other point that's really important is Power Automate empowers every developer to do more. So there's this concept of citizen developer. Citizen developer just means anybody inside a business. Everybody is a citizen. And they can get started very easily with the software that we have. But it's not just limited to the end users. With Power Automate, you also can be a pro developer or an IT. And what we found is, in many cases, IT is the enabler for automation inside organizations. They're the people who are focused on making sure that everybody can be successful and be pr more productive. Uh, so it really does span all of the way from the most basic to the most advanced users taking advantage of automation inside of their business. And with that, I'm going to hand it off to Marios, who's going to talk a little bit about the new and exciting announcement that we have, uh, which is the Power Automate desktop. Thanks, Steven. Here I double click on the application icon, and this brings us to the Power Automate desktop console. First, we need to sign in, and I can do so with my Microsoft account credentials. So the next step is that uh, it connects to the Power Automate service under my credentials. First, I choose the environment I want to work with. And here I see the collection of the environments is exactly the same set of environments that are available in the Power Automate portal. And here, the flows that are displayed here are the flows that belong to the select environment. And again, they are fetched from the cloud, so they can be accessed from the web under the same account. From here, I can choose to start a flow, to stop a running one, to rename or delete a flow, of course, to edit by clicking here or by double-clicking on the flow. 
where I can edit the flow in the flow designer. For this demo, I start by creating a new flow. I click on new flow and I'm prompted here to enter a name. Let's call it demo flow. I click create. And this brings me to the Power Automate Desktop Designer, which is where the tool we can use to build our flows. I see here that uh, on the left pane, we have the actions that are available, which are grouped in categories. The actions are the building blocks that we meet in Max to, to build our flows. There's a last large collection of actions available. So we have actions for implementing logic in our flow, such as conditional actions and loop actions. We have actions for uh, interacting with the local system, with files and folders. We have actions for interacting with desktop applications through the user interface by clicking a button or by populating a text box, for example. We have a corresponding set of actions for doing so on websites and web applications through different browsers that are supported. And of course, we also have actions for interacting with Excel, databases, email, even the command line or green screen terminals. And also actions for calling APIs and services that are available on the web. In the center, we have the workspace where we actually build our flow. As I said before, the idea is that we drag and drop actions from the left. However, for our convenience, there are recorders available that we can use to jumpstart our flow, both for desktop apps and for web applications. Let's see it in action, and I'll use the desktop recorder to automate an application that is installed locally. So I've launched the recorder. Now I click on Start Recording, and from now on, the windows and the elements that I hover over will get highlighted and everything I do will be recorded as an action. So we go here on this window. Let's click on this three item to select the support cases. I click on the new button to add a new support case. Let's enter some dummy data. Let's say I need first to focus on the text field. So let's write here John Smith. Uh, the address could be somewhere on number, an email, and that's it. So we have recorded a sequence of activities and by clicking finish, this recording will be translated into actions. And indeed, we can see here that what we have recorded is translated in actions. Also, we can see that the UI elements that we interacted with are here listed in the UI elements collection where we can add new elements, we can delete the existing ones or modify them. Now let's run what we have done to see if we can play it back. And indeed, we see that it populates the text box and has created a new support case. So this may be fun to watch, but it's not very useful. So what we can do here is to add some, uh, some new actions to make it more interesting and more useful. Let's, let's assume that we have here an Excel spreadsheet with a number of support cases that we want to insert into the app. It's a large collection and we don't want to do this manually. 
So what we need to do here is to go to the designer and add some actions that will allow us to read the data from the Excel and populate the, the form. So we start by launching an Excel instance. And we say that we want to open the support cases worksheet. And the next action would be to read data from this Excel instance. So we want to read a range of cells starting from row one, column one, and up to column four. And for this example, we will only read the first five rows of data. And we see that the data table that will be read from, from the Excel spreadsheet will be stored into a variable that's called Excel data. So the next step would be to add a loop in order to repeat the form filling actions for a number of times for the rows that we've read from Excel. So we want to iterate on this variable. We wrap the actions within the loop. And the next thing that we need to do is just to modify no, that was it. Just to modify the actions that populate the text fields in order to insert the real data and not the dummy ones. So this would be the name. The address here. The phone number. And last would be the email. And that's all we need to do. Now we have a flow that's really useful and could be used to enter a massive amount of data into the application. So let's run it to see how it will work. And indeed, we see that it opens the application. The next step is to open the Excel worksheet, read the data, and populate the, the form in order to add the new cases. Exactly the way that a human user would do, only much faster. And now all the five cases have been entered. And this is done by this short flow here that we've created in a matter of minutes. Of course, we've just scratched the surface here. There's a number of features that can be used for building even more advanced flows. For example, for applications that are not accessible, we can use our image recognition technology and mark parts of the screen that we want the flow to interact with.
Additionally, we can use subflows to break a larger flow into smaller and more manageable, manageable parts. And of course, we have uh, a number of features available for debugging flows, such as breakpoints here, or live variable watch. Now, while we save the flow that we've just created, it's important to note that while Power Automate Desktop can be used independently, it's actually a component and works in collaboration with a larger Power Automate product. So uh, here, if I go to my account on the Power Automate portal, I can see that in my list of flows, also exists the demo flow that we have just created. This way, the flow can be executed as part of a larger API flow that runs on the cloud, unlocking and enabling an even more extensive number of use cases and scenarios. And here, I'll stop sharing my screen. I hope that this was useful in highlighting some of the exciting features that we've been building in Power Automate Desktop. Great. Thank you, Mario. So that, was a, that was a great demo. So the next thing we want to cover is how we say internally, automation is not an island. And what we mean by that is Power Automate's value really comes when you combine Power Automate with the other aspects of Microsoft's properties, such as Microsoft 365, Dynamics 365, Azure, and most importantly, the rest of the Power Platform. So the Power Platform, if you're not familiar with, is the combination of Power BI, Power Apps, Power Virtual Agents, and Power Automate. It's built on top of a number of key components, such as AI Builder, which infuses intelligence throughout the rest of the Power Platform. The common data service that provides a single schema and pl application platform for building data inside of the platform, and our hundreds of data connectors. All of these things together create a package that enables organizations to create robust solutions that really meet any type of business need, but with that common thread of being low code. So everybody from citizen developers to IT pros can take advantage of it. One of the ones that's newest inside the Power Platform is Power Virtual Agents. So I want to touch on that piece a little bit. With Power Virtual Agents, you can train your employees to be able to have conversational interfaces that can accomplish tasks very quickly inside an organization. And the power behind these conversational interfaces is Power Automate itself. So what you can do is you can have a chat that opens up. And when somebody asks a question, it can actually call Power Automate Desktop in the back end to go and retrieve information from an account management system and then surface that information as a part of the chat inside of the Power Virtual Agents interface. So you can have powerful chatbots that use the full power of the connectors plus Power Automate Desktop in order to surface information. Another exciting example is through Dynamics 365. With Dynamics 365, you can have applications that have rich model-driven interfaces and that integrate with Power Automate Desktop, for example, for approvals. Approvals is one of the most common scenarios that people use Power Automate for. And you can have an approval process that kicks off straight from a button inside of any Dynamics 365 application. And that approval process can walk through many different steps, again, of course, including Power Automate Desktop. Uh, so you're really getting the theme here. Uh, and the, the third one that I think is really exciting is Microsoft Teams and the broader Microsoft 365 ecosystem. So we actually have a whole session dedicated to our new integrations with Microsoft Teams. That's an on-demand session, so I definitely recommend checking that out. With our Microsoft Teams integration, just to quickly cover that, you can now trigger automation from any message inside of a chat. You can also manage all of your approval processes from right inside of the Teams client. And of course, again, can connect with Power Automate Desktop to run an automation on demand straight from your Teams chats. So all of these things together really bring the value of automation to the broader Microsoft ecosystem. And that's the number one thing that we're excited about. One other integration I want to touch on is with Azure. This integration is a little different because it brings in pro developers as well to the platform. 
You can have, for example, logic running inside of Azure in an Azure function. And now you can actually call that straight from API through API management from your Power Automate flows. And this means that API management in Azure can act as a central repository for everything that happens in the logic that you're coding in Azure and then consuming as a citizen developer inside of the Power Platform. So we also have an on-demand session talking about the pro dev capabilities that we have coming uh, inside of, of Azure API management plus the Power Platform. Uh, and with that, I would like to talk about uh, a story that T-Mobile shared with me about how they're using Power Automate Desktop. T-Mobile uses Power Apps in order to modernize their capital planning process. They have a capital planning tool called Orbit that's built on top of Canvas and mod-driven applications. This is the Canvas-based application that they have. And you can see here that users can interact with rich views and provide the information that is needed in order to make a capital planning request. There's a bunch of different stages as a part of this request, including creating a project, doing quarterly planning, prioritization, resource allocation, and more. In addition, there's a model-driven application that administrators can go to to approve these requests. This uses something called business process flows, which can model human-driven processes. You can see here, back in the Canvas-based app, a quick refresh will show the status of this request. T-Mobile has a challenge because they recently acquired Sprint. Sprint has a legacy system called GTM. That's a web-based application. They need to take the data from this Orbit system into this legacy GTM system. And an easy way to do that is with Power Automate Desktop. Here we are in the Power Automate Desktop console, which acts as the home page for all of the activity that you want to do. From here, as you just saw, you can very easily create a new flow, as well as run your existing flows, edit the details of your flows, and it even supports environments so you can switch between your dev, test, and prod environments. This is a rich drag and drop interface, so you can build from scratch. But the easiest way to get started is by recording desktop or web apps. We support Edge, Chrome, Firefox, and even the old Internet Explorer. Once you have selected what browser you want, you can just walk through the process like you would when you're interacting with the web page normally. So you can see here the first step to interact with the GTM system is to log in. Once the user has logged in, they can navigate through the different aspects of the website just like they would when they're interacting with it normally. In this case, selecting a particular application and then selecting the particular folder to interact with. As you can see, as the user moves their mouse over the different aspects of the screen, a red box highlights every element that they click. Moreover, the recorder is showing on the left-hand side every step that the user is taking. This means that they can easily see exactly what the recorder understands them doing, and if they need to, they can click the little trash can icon to remove an accidental step that they've added. It's important to note that every single character I enter is recorded into the automation script. Later, I'm going to have to come through and replace these with data that can be passed in as inputs. T-Mobile will ultimately be able to replace this legacy system with a central system for execution. But during this transition period, T-Mobile can use RPA to avoid all of these repetitive steps that you're seeing on the screen. That's particularly important because not only is this a waste of time, but it also is potentially error prone. This flow ensures all upfront financial planning, resource planning, and approvals occur in the system of record. Now we're back in the Power Automate desktop environment, and you can see all of the actions that were recorded as a part of this process. Now it's important to go through and replace the hard-coded text that I typed in with input variables that can be passed into the flow as it runs. In this case, we're passing in variables like the username and orbit number. Once you've provided a name, you should also provide a default value that will be used for testing, as well as a friendly name and a description when you're using this flow from other places. Now that the input variables have been defined, 
you can open up each of the actions and replace the text that you had hard-coded when you did the recording initially with dynamic content that can be passed in. You can see here the three variables that I've defined, as well as the type for each of those variables. Simply by clicking this variable, it'll drop that in as a placeholder. I can then replicate that same process for a few of the other actions that I've taken, such as for the username and entry ID. This work ensures that my flow is completely generic, so it can run in the context of whatever Orbit Entry ID is going to GTM. Now that I've gone through and added the appropriate input variables, I can also adjust additional configuration for any of these actions. All of this, of course, without writing a single line of code. For example, I can change the value by just editing it directly in the designer. And sometimes something may go wrong, such as an unexpected pop-up appearing. You can configure exception handling actions to deal with these scenarios. All this configuration gives you a ton of control over exactly what happens whenever your flow runs. Now, let's take a look at this in action. You can run your flows from Power Automate Desktop or from a flow in the cloud. Power Automate will drive the web page to enter all of that data that I've passed in. You can see here it's interacting with the web page just like a user would, typing in text, selecting data from dropdowns, even interacting with elements like date controls. At the top of the browser, you know that it does have a banner indicating that automation software is driving the browser. So that way you can know that it's Power Automate that's doing this behavior on your behalf. And that's it. In just a few seconds, we were able to automate taking data from Orbit into Sprint's GTM system. One other important point is that all of this can be connected to and ran from the Power Automate service in the cloud. The Power Automate service gives you a history of all of the runs that happen inside of Power Automate Desktop, and you can click on a particular run and see the specific error messages that could have caused it. This is particularly useful because you can click the resubmit button to retry a run if something does go wrong, so that way it can attempt again if the error was temporary. You can see here I click resubmit and it started the automation all over again. So with that, we have a scenario that has saved T-Mobile a ton of time as a part of their merger with Sprint, all using Power Automate Desktop. And with that, I'd like to talk a little bit about what's uh, some resources that you can take advantage of inside of the ecosystem here. Uh, so there's a bunch of learning content. So Microsoft Learn is the best place to get started. And Microsoft Learn provides a way to understand all the basic concepts of Power Automate. Of course, there's also detailed documentation, for example, about Power Automate Desktop. How do you get started with Power Automate Desktop on our documentation site? Uh, we have a rich community. Hundreds of thousands of people are in our community every single month talking about the Power Platform, and now they'll be talking about Power Automate Desktop too. So if you'd love to learn about what Power Automate Desktop has to offer and how other people are leveraging it, join us on the community. Uh, you can, of course, check out our blogs, which announce the latest news and all of the exciting things that are happening. So we'll be adding features to Power Automate Desktop as it's in its preview. Uh, so definitely recommend checking that out. And of course, uh, we have an upcoming event uh, at the beginning of October as well. And with that, uh, just one last plug. Uh, please evaluate our session. Let us know what you think. Uh, love to hear your comments and what we can do better in the future. Thank you very much for joining today, and I'm really excited to see all the awesome new things that everybody will build using Power Automate Desktop. Goodbye.